some conversations that not a lot of crappy fishermen want to have. Draw power. Now, you're probably like, well, Stephen, what the heck is draw power? Draw power is essentially what a lure will do to a fish to draw it to bite. And how does that apply in crappy fishing? That's what we're going to be going over today. What's going on guys? Steven Turner here with Turner Fishing. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking me out. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about drawing power. Now this is, I, I have never seen a video about this. So I'm excited to be one of the, the first people to talk about this in the crappy fishing world. Because in the bass fishing world, draw power is everywhere. Every lure, you know, people understand what the draw power is to it. Now, did you know there's guys out there charging $500 to $2,000 for a day trip to teach you how to use your forward-facing sonar? Now, if you didn't know, I sold my live scope about a year ago, so I haven't really been able to make content about it. I had to pay my light bill and had to pay my rent. I mean, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. I thought I would be able to afford it within a couple weeks, months, whatever, but I've had so many vehicle problems. I have vehicle problems right now. I don't have a vehicle right now. So what I did, I put up a donation thing at the top right of crappymanjigs.com. This is to help get LiveScope back on the boat so I can teach you exactly what these high paid guides are gonna show you. And the best part is, you know, if everybody helps together and we get this thing going, everything's gonna be free on YouTube. I'm not gonna charge anything. You'll be able to click on the video. I'm gonna go over everything step by step how to find your jig, how to find fish, how to catch a fish, what does a fish look like, how to tell where the mouth is, where the tail is. Just, it, it's so much information. And now that I have a way to do it, I want to put this information out there. But, you know, life happens, got bills to pay. I'm not able to save as much as I could. I always try to save money. I have a jar at the house. I've saved a lot and then something breaks. I got to use that money. Y'all know how it is. So anything helps, it's not, you know, required or anything. I just wanted to throw this plug in this video. I appreciate y'all checking me out and I appreciate everybody out there. Let's get back to the video. Best way to start explaining this, I'm gonna put this clip up where I caught like a pound and a half, uh, like a 15 inch fish, something like that. And as you can see, my lure is going down right here. And we have a school right here on this brush pile of you know really good quality fish i mean every one of these are you know 14 to 16 inches and i'm using the little minnow and crappy man green on this cast right here now as you see this fish right here comes up from this other school and eats the lure and i ended up catching him so the biggest take back from that clip before i kind of deep dive into this is as you notice, there there was other fish of the same size as the fish we caught. But why did that one fish come out of that school in order to eat my jig? That was the drawing power to that fish. So that's what we're going to be going over right now. In my hand right now are three of the baits I make here at Crappy Man, Crappy Man Jigs. Now, I'm not telling you you got to have my jigs. You can go out and buy you whatever whatever you want. I'm just going to explain the drawing power and why I have certain jigs in my lineup. So basically, drawing power is taking bass fishing. If you have a big old glide bait, like the one right, right here that I was trying to make, this is a huge, huge bait. But if you threw this bait out and it looked pretty, unlike it does now, and you went over a brush pile, you're gliding this thing over a brush pile. If there's a five pounder in that brush pile, more than likely he's gonna come up and you're gonna draw his attention. Now, whether he bites or not, that's a different story. This apply for crappy fishing. You know, a bigger bait is obviously going to attract a bigger bass, but they may not bite it. But am I telling you, you should be throwing, you know, three inch swim baits. No, that's not what I'm telling you. But I will say last year, the biggest fish I caught on live scope, the biggest two fish I caught on a swim jig, which if you're not a bass fisherman, is pretty much a spinner bait 
without the spinners. It's just a, a jig with the, the silicone skirt on it. I took the weed guard off and I would throw it without any trailer, just a silicone skirt, a big profile, probably five inches. And I was bass fishing. I ended up catching two of the biggest crappie of the year off that. But that was during the pre-spawn and that's kind of, they'll eat anything. But if you've ever had the opportunity to go out on a live scope trip with me, you would have noticed I switched between three baits. You know, I'm constantly switching between the fluke, the minnow, and the swim bait. And I'm, I, I want to explain that right now. When I'm sitting there watching how these fish react, this is why, you know, I tried to plug in. I would like to show everybody this on live scope whenever I get it back. But normally I start with the minnow. That's that's my key thing. You know, they're going to bite it most of the time. The little minnow. Doesn't really matter the color when you first start off trying to catch a fish. Now we're talking about a lot of fish, not just one fish right now. So I'm going to throw the little minnow. I'm going to throw it past them. I'm going to let it sink down. I'm just let it sink down. And when it gets about an inch on the screen above them, I'm going to either pick up on my rod and let it swing past them, or I'm going to wind it. But what I'm looking for as I'm doing this is how many fish come out of that school to look at this. I don't care if I get a bite. I don't care if one of them eats it right off the bat. I want to see how many blobs come up to check out my bait. Now, if I swim it and I pendulum past them and no blobs come up to look at my bait, which I, is the draw potential of this bait, you know, that, that's what I'm trying to cover right now. Then I'm going to switch. And normally I'll go from the minnow to the swim bait. The swim bait has amazing draw because of the paddle tail on it. I mean, this tail's down there doing this right above them. I mean, they're going to be interested into coming up to eat it. But there have been times when I would throw this out past the school. Let it drop down and just granny crawl it over the school and none of them come out so if that happens then i'm going to switch to the fluke <coughs> <coughs> and with the fluke i'm going to repeat the same process i'm going to throw it past them i'm going to let it just come right above them and see how many blobs come out to check it and 90 percent of the time you're going to have one bait that is better at drawing their attention than the other baits. Now, if you don't get that bite when you've got two or three blobs checking it out, that's when you change colors, guys. That is the, the most important piece of the puzzle is when you find a profile of jig. Now, you could be throwing Bobby Garland, Mr. Crappy, hair jigs, anything like that. And if you're pulling fish out of that school, if you're targeting individual fish and you see them turn on your bait and they're not biting, that's when you change colors. And then you go from a natural color to a crappy man green to a urgle to a monkey milk. You change about three or four colors and then if they don't bite, then you go. It's time to go find another school. And then once you get on that other school, you're going to do the same exact process. You're going to figure out the draw potential of your baits on that school. And once you have some that's interested, key in on what color they want. And then it's, it's like going to the grocery store. You're going to go to the grocery store. You're going to open the freezer. You're going to get that pack of nasty tilapia, put it in your buggy. And that's going to be every cast. Once you figure out that draw. Now you may catch five or six off a brush pile and they stop coming up to check it out. That's fine. Go to the next brush pile. Repeat the process. And then you're going to do the same thing. Go to the dock. Repeat the process. You've got to figure out these fish. The fish have brains. They may be small, but every fish is different. And if you could put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you'll have an amazing time on the water. I really hope this kind of brightens up everybody's uh, deal. Like, you spend all this money on forward facing sonar, there's no sense to not know this knowledge while you're out there. If the fish are not looking at your stuff, change. And if they're looking at it, change your color. 
And if they're still not biting it, you know, you may want to downsize. I do go to the Little Stinker a lot. Little Stinker has a lot of draw power. But keep it simple, but keep it advanced at the same time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash that thumbs up button for me. Uh, check out the website down below. Grab you some crappy man jigs. Donation button up at the top. Really help y'all. You know, help help all of us, honestly. Because the more I'm able to do this, the more I'm able to put into this channel, the more you guys at home are going to get free information. Free, free everything. I don't want to have to go to where I need to make members videos to pay my bills. So, check it out at the top, guys. This apply for crappy fishing. You know, a bigger bait is obviously going to attract a bigger bass, but they may not bite it. But am I telling you, you should be throwing, you know, three inch swim baits. No, that's not what I'm telling you. But I will say last year, the biggest fish I caught on live scope, the biggest two fish I caught on a swim jig, which if you're not a bass fisherman, is pretty much a spinner bait without the spinners. It's just a, a jig with the, the silicone skirt on it. I took the weed guard off and I would throw it without any trailer, just a silicone skirt, a big profile, probably five inches. And I was bass fishing. I ended up catching two of the biggest crappy of the year off that. But that was during the pre-spawn and that's kind of, they'll eat anything. But if you've ever had the opportunity to go out on a live scope trip with me, you would have noticed I switched between three baits. You know, I'm constantly switching between the fluke, the minnow and the swim bait and um, I, I want to explain that right now when I'm sitting there watching how these fish react this is why you know I tried to plug in I would like to show everybody this on live scope whenever I get it back but normally I start with the minnow that's that's my key thing you know they're gonna bite it most of the time the little minnow doesn't really matter the color when you first start off trying to catch a fish now we're talking about a lot of fish not just one fish right now so i'm gonna throw it a little minute i'm gonna throw it past them i'm gonna let it sink down I'm just let it sink down and when it gets about an inch on the screen above them i'm gonna either pick up on my rod and let it swing past them or i'm gonna wind it but what i'm looking for as i'm doing this is how many fish come out of that school to look at this i don't care if i get a bite i don't care if one of them eats it right off the bat I want to see how many blobs come up to check out my bait. Now, if I swim it and I pendulum past them and no blobs come up to look at my bait, which I, is the draw potential of this bait, you know, that, that's what I'm trying to cover right now. Then I'm going to switch. And normally I'll go from the minnow to the swim bait. The swim bait has amazing draw because of the paddle tail on it. I mean, this tail's down there doing this right above them. I mean, they're going to be interested into coming up to eat it. But there have been times when I would throw this out past the school, let it drop down, and just granny crawl it over the school, and none of them come out. So if that happens, then I'm going to switch to the fluke. Repeat the same process. I'm going to throw it past them. I'm going to let it just come right above them and see how many blobs come out to check it. And 90% of the time, you're going to have one bait that is better at drawing their attention than the other baits. Now, if you don't get that bite when you've got two or three blobs checking it out, that's when you change colors, guys. That is the, the most important piece of the puzzle. Is when you find a profile of jig now you could be throwing Bobby Garland mr. crappy hair jigs anything like that and if you're pulling fish out of that school if you're targeting individual fish and you see them turn on your bait and they're not biting that's when you change colors and then you go from a natural color to a crappy man green to a urgle to a monkey milk you change about three or four colors, and then if they don't bite, then you go. It's time to go find another school. And then once you get on that other school, you're going to do the same exact process.
process. You're going to figure out the draw potential of your baits on that school. And once you have some that's interested, key in on what color they want. And then it's, it's like going to the grocery store. You're going to go to the grocery store. You're going to open the freezer. You're going to get that pack of nasty tilapia, put it in your buggy. And that's going to be every cast. Once you figure out that draw. Now you may catch five or six off a brush pile and they stop coming up to check it out. That's fine. Go to the next brush pile, repeat the process. And then you're going to do the same thing. Go to the dock, repeat the process. You've got to figure out these fish. The fish have brains. They may be small, but every fish is different. And if you could put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you'll have an amazing time on the water. I really hope this kind of brightens up everybody's uh, deal. Like you spend all this money on forward facing sonar, there's no sense to not know this knowledge while you're out there. If the fish are not looking at your stuff, change. And if they're looking at it, change your color. And if they're still not biting it, you know, you may want to downsize. I do go to the little stinker a lot. Little stinker has a lot of draw power, but keep it simple but keep it advanced at the same time hope you guys enjoyed the video smash that thumbs up button for me uh, check out the website down below grab you some crappy man jigs donation button up at the top really help y'all you know help help all of us honestly because the more i'm able to do this the more i'm able to put into this channel the more you guys at home are going to get free information free free everything I don't want to have to go to where I need to make members videos to pay my bills. So check it out at the top, guys.